What a world. It's your boy Chuck Wick. I'm back. AKA Charles Brown, CLBMG. How y'all doing? Good. Um, I got another review for you. Um, ATCQ, a tribe called Quest. We got it from here. Thank you for your service. Now, I know I'm a little late on this review, but let me explain why. I've been listening to this album every single day since it dropped. Basically, every single day. Um, this album is amazing. Let me just start there. It's it's amazing. Uh, I've looked at critic reviews. I've looked at average music listeners' reviews. I haven't found anyone that says it's even remotely close to trash or garbage or any or anything of that nature. Um, I'm actually waiting to find somebody so I can jump on it with both feet and pretty much kick them in inside out. But you know, I digress. <laughs> but literally every day. Tribe goes in. This is the best album I've heard in about 20 years. Um, sad to say, it's better than De La, and I and you know I love De La. I love De La Soul. This album is the best hip hop album. <clears throat> you can name me 10, and I can tell you it's better than all 10 of them. Justifies 2016 as being one of the best hip hop years we have had in a very long time, which is another video I'm gonna. That'll come out soon about how I feel about 2015 and 2016 as hip hop years in and of themselves versus any two years in hip hop. That's a whole different story. Um, so let me let me let me let me jump right into this review. I'm not gonna keep you waiting all day. Uh, a tribe called Quest ATCQ. Uh, Tip is a genius. Um, I read that Tip did the production on this, and it was very very smart the way this fell together because tip is a genius and uh i know tip catches shit from different avenues i know some people blame tip for the breakup of of, of tribe some people say tip is an egomaniac whatever whatever sometimes when you are very good at something you have to step forward and take control of some stuff and that may rub some people the wrong way. I am a tribe lover. I have been loving tribes since they uh, began. Thanks to Sean Morris, I listened to tribe when it first dropped. Uh, he forced me to listen to it. He made me come to his house. Every time he saw me, he's like, you gotta come to my house and listen to this tribe. You have to. Cause we were big on soulful, jazzy, beats and loops and we were into all that kind of stuff um and tribe was the next level the natural progression of what we already listened to uh the first album people's instinctive travels and blase blah with uh el segundo and things like that this album uh is right there with any tribe album midnight marauders is my hands down favorite I love all of Tribe albums uh, for the most part. Um, I didn't. I wasn't a big fan of the Love Movement. I'm tell you that. But this one right here, literally, you're talking about a guy who's listened to Tribe since when did they drop? 1990, something like that. 91, something like that. I think this is hands down the best Tribe. Not hands down, but this is much more musically advanced than anything they've ever done this is like once you've handed someone a cosmic cube with every single drop of knowledge about whatever and they use that cube this is what you come with you 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 come with this um rest in peace to fife when i first heard that this album was in the making i got nervous i was like here we go you know they, they they're going to throw together a bunch of outtakes and snippets uh mediocre verses that shouldn't be out shouldn't be heard and that is not the case this album is amazing a lot of critics a lot of people agree with me um so let me get into it uh let me just preference it by saying uh if you want to hear me dissing this album you might as well click to the next video and go do something else with your life because this is this is it let me start this off space program this is amazing uh it has that 
tribe diddy bop that we heard um on a couple albums especially toward the end um with the beats rhymes and life uh that album and then love movement a lot of diddy bop jay dilla type stuff this feels nice this is like this is a nice intro it ain't hitting you too hard and i love the subject matter where um you can tell it was written before hillary lost because tip is talking about she's reclining with her wine and her percocets that's the president and we all know that didn't happen yet so um this was written before hillary lost before trump won it probably would have had a different feel after trump won i don't even think we get this same type of album if hillary if this is created after hillary lost um, but the space program is amazing, and I, and I still don't actually know what he means by imagine if this was really talking about space. I mean, I get it. You know, I get the metaphor, but I don't get it. So I'm going to leave it at that. But I love that. I love this song. Space program is a great way to start this album. And um, you get you get thr thrust right in with the, you know, the, the sample, um, the movie sample and, you know, the the the. the you feel right. It feels like, okay, here we go. This is Tribe. We the people. This is probably the hardest beat on this album. Um, This is an amazing track due to the fact that Fife is out of his zone on this. You don't hear this type of Fife. With what he's saying, it's not like he's not... Uh, Talib or not, he's not doing a whole thing, but what he's saying is not is not the typical fife you're gonna hear. This is grown man fife. This is 20 years later fife. Yes, I'm still nice, but I seen some shit. You know what I'm saying? And what he did and the way him and Tip played off of this, uh, this we the people, this whole thing. Um, I'm actually surprised it didn't get much more of an uproar. But I think everybody got it. I thought I really thought when I first was listening to this track, I was like, in this um, climate, this politically charged climate, you're saying Muslims and gays. Boy, we hate your ways. I thought it would be one of the most misinterpreted hooks in a very long time. Like since LL Cool J did the song uh, with the. I don't remember the country guy's name, but whatever the song they did and um about it was a it was a a racial cut that was supposed to help heal the two sides and it only infuriated people. I thought this we the people would be that for 2016. But I have not seen anyone really misinterpreting it. I haven't seen anyone uh, coming left field and trying to go at tip on Twitter about it because I guess you get it a song that's supposed to make you think and it's supposed to put you in the seat of the guy saying that why he's feeling what he's feeling and why we don't accept that so kudos to tip with this type of track um I love Fife's verse uh you could almost get teary-eyed when you watch the video and you see the little banner fly drip down because Fife is gone and this is it whatever you're hearing right now this is it and so uh it's we didn't appreciate him you know what i'm saying we didn't appreciate him while he was here he had so much to offer this game and by him being so linked to tip i've never seen two people except maybe epmd who need each other so much if if tip or five dropped this same album without each other, we wouldn't even listen to it. So we underestimated Fife because without Tip, we weren't able to even digest Fife. So what we have these these verses few and far between on this album, which is I like what they did. They didn't force him on everything because they never did that. So if he was on every single track, this album would be trash. It would be forced. And I like what they did. They kept it tribe. Fife is only on the songs that Fife should be on. Let me keep it moving. Whatever will be. Um, whatever will be is 
an amazing track with it has a, a Caribbean feel to me in my opinion and it's very you don't hear you don't hear rappers making this kind of music this is why this album is amazing you taking a Caribbean vibe you got Fife on it doing his Trinidad thing and uh it's just fantastic and uh I feel like this was put so early because it's so different that it you you have to get it out the way you it, it's an amazing track most people this would have been their last song they all right the album's over let me throw this on and then whatever would be no they put it third and it works the dolomite intro and you got this 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 nice bounce this caribbean or whatever you want to call it uh world type of music i don't know why but it's it works it's amazing um hats off to fife again for just being fife he's not trying too hard he's just doing him and it works next song solid wall of sound this is one of my favorite songs on here and and that's saying a lot because Every song on here is my favorite song. I would have to really dig far and deep and nitpick at this album to tell you something I don't like, which I'm a, I'm going to get to something I that whatever, you know. But Solid Wall of Sound, um I've heard a lot of Elton John. I I don't particularly know the exact song this was sampled from. Um I don't know. But it worked well. Again, he's like me. He digs through everything. And I mean, I used Atlanta's Atlantis more set on a hook before, and you know, it 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 worked in my opinion. Uh, he took a you don't hear a lot of people sampling Elton John, and this guy took it and, and also got him to sing on it, which I would love to be a fly on a wall and that conversation of how he called Elton John. What did he, how did he get Elton John to sing on this song? I would love to know. You know, I, I know that I was I heard that uh he had to he was the only person who didn't come to the studio. He had to do it in London or wherever he was at. But um what are you saying to Elton? What do you what did you send him? What did you did you did you sing it for him and send it or did you just send him the words and he sung it like what how do we get here? But a uh, solid wall of sound is another one where it's it's actually amazing. I love the way they play off. They got Buster. They got Fight. You know, just, just bounce back and forth. And it's another, uh, it's another vibe that you don't hear from most people. Most rappers they want to rhyme hook, rhyme hook, and then you know just hit you with all these bars about how much money and this and that. That's not what you're getting with this tribe, John. That's why I love it. Let me move on. This generation. First of all, the guitar is my favorite instrument. So if you put a guitar with a nice, you know, catchy, nice catchy chord structure and you just kind of leave it at a good tempo, you already got me right there. Then you got Fife bouncing back and forth. You got Tip and it's just, I don't even know. I, I, I don't know where that kid with the, this generation i don't know where he got that from i'm hoping it's not the little kid that's singing the pokemon song but it sounds like him but it could you know i hope that's not him it may even be little vicious the reggae kid i don't know somebody can in the comments tell me who that kid is or what sample that is or whatever but i love this generation the next song kids now we're gonna talk about kids when kids first came on i was not sure about kids um i heard i heard i heard three, i heard 3000 i heard dre rhymes is nice and everything kids sound like something i would have made when i was goofing off with fruity loops and playing around and trying to figure out uh, how to do, you know, tremelo and all. I would have just been dun, 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 watching the sequence of bounce and just doing something silly that I would have never used ever. Um, so it sound like a producer's first attempt at making a beat. But I say that to say this. The more I listen to kids, 
with the uh, I believe that's um Ad Rock Beastie Boys sample. I believe that's where he got that from. And I listened to Dre on the hook and um I started listening to the structure of the song and the the tempo and the uh the playfulness. I knew it was I knew it was experimental, but um it really it really grew on me as I started to listen to what kid uh what kids meant and what Dre was saying and, and they, how they played off each other and how they they jumped in and they you know they switched off it was fantastic I was like these two guys are brilliant um and and I think kids was probably the one song when I first started listening that was like oh they get ready to turn left this is great to get like when daylight went left and it went weird and it was like Three songs in a row were like, ugh, this is bad. But Kids grew on me, and now I I think Kids is an amazing song. Now, if I would someone say, play one song off that album. One. Give me one song. It's so it's so damn dope to play one song. It's not I'm not gonna put kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not gonna be kids. The song I would play is the next song. Melatonin. Um, melatonin uh, is extremely creative. Um, when I say that, I mean, um, who's making songs about melatonin? Like, <laughs> I eat melatonin gummies to go to sleep. I've never once thought about rapping about melatonin. It's a, it's it's something to just give you, you know, you need one, you need two just to get to sleep. It's whatever. This dude Tip made an entire song about melatonin. Um, I wish I knew who the artist was that is singing the hook on it, but it's amazing. I am very um, pleased with this melatonin track. <laughs> I should already know who she is, but I don't. And uh, whoever you are, you're amazing. Um... But it's very, it's, it's very catchy. It's very, you're drifting off, thinking about life. And this song's in the background. You come back, the song's still on, and you're like, oh my God, this, what am I listening to? This is amazing. Like, the, it puts you in a zone. It takes you somewhere else. And it really is like melatonin, but it's not putting you to sleep. Like, everybody's like, oh, J. Cole is putting me to sleep. Sleepy raps like J. Cole. This is not some sleepy rap. This is thought provoking. This is when you want to hear someone speaking to your inner consciousness. You don't want to just be yelled at, screamed at, told how dope you are and everything. You, sometimes you just want someone to reflect with you. And this is a song that lets you reflect. Uh, I'm going to say Melatonin probably gets the most spins. Melatonin enough. All right, so let me move forward to the next song, which I just mentioned is Enough. Fantastic. This dude, Jarobi. Now, you could correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember Jarobi rapping at all, let alone rapping like what he's doing on this album. Uh, Jarobi gets busy. Like, I'm like, I like this dude's voice. Like, like not even like on some others. I I'm like this dude got a voice for this. This guy is nice. Like as far as he he sounds like this is his job. Like this is it doesn't sound like someone wrote this and then he just mimicked it. It sounds like this guy should have been rapping the entire time. His performance on enough, and I believe space program. This guy, he's holding his own with the best rappers in the world. And enough. He comes in. I love the structure. I love the premise. It's a, it's a, uh, what we could girl joint, what we call it. It's a girl. He got a girl joint and he love joint. This is a girl joint, but it's very, very, you don't have to be in a zone of, I need love to put this song on. This song will come on. And it, this is like, you're stressing about your girl type of song, but let's still have fun. Let's talk about it. 
You know what I'm saying? If I'm if 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 I'm on the road all the time and you're missing me, let's talk about it. Is this enough? Am I doing enough? This is a perfect track, an ode to females without being overly I love you, girl. Like all oh, you know, it's not too much. This is this is like we're we're cool. How can we stay cool? And I and I appreciate what Tip is doing on this. Um I am I don't think Tip has done this quality of work ever. That's just me. So, according to Tip, that's side A. I'm going to move on to side B. Um, Mobius. There is no Tip. There is no Fife. It's just Buster and Consequence. Now, let me preference this by saying this. Um, I thought when Consequence was added to a Tribe Called Quest on, I believe, Beats, Rhymes, and Life LP. When I first heard that, uh, me and Juan, Juan bought it. We we went to the store. He bought, I, I believe he gave it to me for a birthday gift. Like, what's up, dog? This is your gift. He gave me the CD. We went to my house and listened to it. It was a room of us listening to Beats, Rhymes, and Life. Like, we got to hear this, and we got to listen to it together. So we put it on... Um, Listen to it from beginning to end. Beginning to end. There was no rewind and skipping. You just listened to it. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they, whatever you were doing, you just did in the background, but the, the, the song, the album was on. I thought that Consequence, although he was okay as an MC, was nice, he should not have been added as a member of Tribe because he's not a member of Tribe. He's this guy's cousin or whatever he is. That's a slap in the face to all Tribe fans. You don't just throw some random dude in talking about, yeah, he a member of Tribe. No, he's not. You know what I'm saying? No, he's not. He's not a member of Tribe. We don't accept it. We rebuke the entire idea and we rebuke him as a rapper. But I say that to say this. On Mobius, Consequence holds his own. I I, I got a sneak of suspicion. Fife May was supposed to be on this song. Um, and I think Fife would have killed it. Um, but he's not on the song, so you take it for what it is. Consequence gets paid now. When Buster comes in, it's a different subject. Like this is like you saw two fish, and one fish was cool, and then the other fish completely took the fish in his mouth, and he and he swallowed him. That's when Buster comes. Ah, when I my, he goes nuts, and it's just like what? What just happened? Buster absolutely murders this song. This is the old Buster. If you know what the old Buster is, this is Buster. And you might disagree or whatever. I don't understand why you disagree. You may just just to be whatever, just to say, uh, you know, because he's old or whatever now that you disagree. I'm telling you right now, this is the old Buster you're getting. Mobius is nice. I love what Tip is doing with the beat structures. He's, he's giving you one before you even realize that it's another one in there. It's completely different from the last one, but you're still bodding, nodding your head to the same tempo. You don't even realize you just got switched up on until the third time you listen to it. You're like, oh, snap. And then it goes back to the original beat after everybody start rapping. Tip is a genius. Um, some people may not like that, but I love that Tip is not, he's never letting you get bored with this. So let me move on. Next song, Black Spasmodic. This is a cool song. This song sounds like something Fife. This sounds like something Fife wanted on the album. This sounds like Fife heard this beat and was like, this got to be on the album. This is a cut that we need to be on this album. It's a dope cut. I like it. It's cool. Um, is it one of my favorites? No. It's not one of my favorites. It, it, it's, um, as a matter of fact, I, I won't listen to Black Spasmodic anywhere near anything else on this album but um it's a good song it's not a song that i'm gonna if you give me one shot and i'm not it's not gonna be black spasmodic but it's a good song i believe uh i believe the Roby's on this song too uh everybody gets paid on it and what have you let me move forward um the killing season
with Taleb Kweli. Let me explain to you. This song, I can't play this song because I have to play it like 10 times in a row. I cannot put on the killing season if I got something to do or go somewhere. I, I need 10. I need five rotations of this song. Um, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, this is where they went wrong. This is it. This is the track. I'm going to be skipping this track every time. Oh, God. When it first come on with Talib with the doubled up vocals and the weird bass line, boom, 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 all up and down all over. The, I was like, this is where they going, they lost me. I'm done. I'm good. Uh, let me hit the skip. I almost skipped it. And then Jerobi comes with soldier, soldier, soldier. It's like, what is is this magic? Is this like, where are these bumblebees and butterflies and flowers? This is amazing. I love the killing season. And the only reason you wouldn't love the killing season is if you live mentally in a different place than most people that I know do the, the 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 song. This song is a struggle song, um, and it's talking about struggle uh, rap. It's struggle, the struggle of being inner city, living with what we're living. We're going through what we're going through. If you don't understand that, you're not gonna get this song. You're you're going if you're looking at stuff through the eyes of Twitter and you're trying to relate real world issues into little tweet bubbles that make you seem like you're doing the right thing and everyone else is wrong, then this song is not going to work for you. But this is an amazing song for people who have been and do understand what a struggle is. So I love The Killing Season. It is fantastic. Lost Somebody. Um, now, I, I know that this song is about Fife. I didn't get it at first i knew it was just about losing somebody when i first heard it the more i listened to it i'm like you know and it should have clicked in the beginning but i'm like they're talking about five this is about this song is about five dying how can a song be about five dying on the same album that fife is rapping alive how can that coexist how is that how is that a thing you know what I'm saying? Like, how how does that how is there a tribute song to a man I just heard rapping before and after this song? But it this is a tribute song to Fife. Lost Somebody is um very I'm sure they probably wanted Mary J on here because it sounded like something they wrote for her. But I don't know, she's not. But uh it's a good song. It's a very it, it's not something I want to hear on the regular. A lot of times I have to let it play. Like, all right, just leave it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't want to hear a sad rap song, which even though Tip is amazing, and they're talking about, you know, eating the curry food and taking care of Fife and being his man forever, and that's great. I don't want to hear that a lot. You know what I'm saying? But the song is good. It's another good song. Um, it feels right. It doesn't feel forced. It feels like, you know, we, we're going to pay homage to Fife, whether you like him or not. And this is where it goes. So I like Lost Somebody. There, like again, there is no trash rap on here. Lost Somebody is better than ninety percent of the crap that they got right now, and and, and it ain't even something you want to hear a lot of. But it's still good. Let me move forward. Moving backwards. Um, again, Jerovi, he he does his thing. Um. I, I'm like, I'm losing my mind. The other guy's name, Anderson Pack, or Pack Anderson, one or the other. Uh, I like his voice. I like this song. Um, I, so you put Lost Somebody and then Moving Backwards right behind each other. It's the same feel. So it's like if you didn't, if you, if you didn't feel one, you're, you're probably not going to feel the other. Um, I like them both. I like Moving Backwards a little more than Lost Somebody. Um, moving backwards grew on me and it, and it bounces around it changes so much that if you don't like one part you can like the other so I think it's a quality song I thought the hook was what Jerobi was doing in the first when he first did his part and he was like no backward ass oh don't be. I thought that was the hook I didn't really like that for the hook but if you pay attention they never do it again so it's not the hook and once I learned that I was like that's a good song and they're talking to 
people who don't always progress. You know what I'm saying? Some people, some people right now are in the same mental place as the last Tribe album dropped in 1996. It's 2016. And I guarantee you, there's a good amount of people still mentally in the same place in 2016 that when they dropped the love movement and broke up. And that's a backward ass nigga. So th that is that is what this song is for. Don't be that. You know what I'm saying? We, we're, we're moving on. You need to move on as well. Let me talk about probably the most underrated song on this album. It's Conrad Tokyo. And before you think I'm going to say that because of Kendrick, you are wrong, sir. I didn't even realize how dope Conrad Tokyo was until like probably my 15th time hearing it. Cause I would, I was blown away by so much stuff before it that it even took me time to really get, I had to get tired of the stuff before it to actually listen to Conrad Tokyo for what it is. When it actually hit me how dope Conrad Tokyo is when you understand Fife flow. He sounds like an instrument on this song. It sounds like he's part of the sample. Conrad Tokyo. Oh my God. I can't even think about it without just getting like giddy. I'm like the little girl in the gift who's like, ah! whatever, <laughs> whatever she's excited about. I'm like that with this. This song, Fife's flow on this song is a masterpiece it is he probably don't even know the level that he's at with this flow over this sample this beat combined this could be the hottest record in the world right now but it's buried in this album it's never going to be released as a single and it's over so many people's heads when you just the title in and of itself, you start thinking Tokyo and you start thinking anime or whatever. This this song to me is probably Fife Dog's best lyrical performance. It is what it is. Take it or leave it. You, can, you don't have to believe me. But for those who may get confused with Kendrick's um, verse and think that Kendrick ate Fife, you are mistaken, sir. Kendrick came off. He does what Kendrick does. He does it. Fife murdered this beat because he played the beat like it's supposed to be. This wasn't a pre, in my opinion, this wasn't some pre-packaged rap that he had from somewhere. This sound like he put this exactly to that beat. He, he, he possibly wrote it for that exact specific beat and he killed it. Conrad Tokyo went from being one of my and eh, it's alright to being like play that again. Alright, play that again. Put that back on. Oh my this is incredible. The next song Ego. Tip with Ego pretty much said everything he needed to say about his own insecurities and about all of ours as well and ego that was another one this it's a staggered beat that has its own like uh it's it's not a typical it's one of them beats that you make when you're trying to be different but it is different and i really like what he did it's not i don't think anybody could just rap to this you got one i got one we got an ego that's something you have to you that the beat makes you rap like that. The beat makes you flow like that. So he got he got sunned by the beat. And his lyrics are they are they are right on topic. He made a song called Ego. He told you that he has an ego and he hopes you feel his ego and things of that nature. And it's amazing. Um I like ego. At first I was kinda that's another one. I was kinda I think all these songs toward the tail end, I was like, they're okay, they're cool, whatever, but I would play the stuff before that but now i'm playing the stuff on the tail end uh moving backwards conrad tokyo ego and let me get into the final song the donald
on first look, I thought that Donald was going to be by what else? Donald Trump. Um, other people were saw the thing and they were like, oh, they got a song about Donald Trump. It's not about Donald Trump. Uh, it's about Fife. It's another Fife tribute. Well-deserved. Another Fife tribute song. Um, I like it. Um, and it sounds like Buster was in there. Uh, I don't think he was called on to do this. I think he was there and was like, I want to do this. And he came in with that. It sounded to me like he came in with that hook. He came in with that whole, the whole structure of that. And they built the song around it. Um, they probably was like, what is this? What do you think with this beat? What do you, uh, the Fife did one verse. Um, and I, and, and I honestly, I don't think it was meant for Fife to do one verse. It seems like maybe Fife and then other people, Tip has his verse, but his verse is about Fife. If you, if you're paying attention. So I think Fife did that verse and then passed. And they were like, no, we can't just make this song what it was going to be. We need to make this about around Fife's verse. So Tip wrote his verse talking about Fife. And then Buster came and did his hook and things of that nature. And they made a nice song. Uh, Don Juice, all that stuff. I love it. It's, it's amazing. Uh, who's doing that right now? Like... Yeah, you're going to find some abstract indie guy doing something similar, but nobody's doing what they're doing for real. Like, people are so in a box. Like, you just saw Childish Gambino um, come out of his box, and that's what we need right now. Kudos to Tribe. Kudos to Tip, Fife, Buster, Talib, um, Kendrick. Uh, Kanye's even on this somewhere. They keep saying he's on there. I don't know. It, uh, he's supposed to be on, uh, what song is he on? Um, is it melatonin? Whatever song he's on, I don't, I don't hear him. So I think I heard him one time, and it was like I haven't heard him since. So I heard him on the hook or something. Whatever. Good job, Tip. Good job, uh, Jerobi. R.I.P. to fight. Shout out to Mr. Muhammad and um. The engineer, you did your thing. You got paid. You got busy. I don't remember his name right now. Shout out to everybody that loved this album. This album gets a A++++ from me. This is the pinnacle album of the decade. Last two decades. So, that's how I feel. So, with that being said, I'm out. Chuck Wick Ills, Charles Brown, CLBMG. Peace out. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Write something in the comments. I'll write back. Peace.